This lesson will show how to factor perfect square trinomials and also the difference of two squares. And these are a couple of specific factoring rules and it's all based on patterns. And this is actually the opposite of what was done in section 5.2 in the text where we take a look at if you square a binomial then there's a certain pattern to uh, the answer and you don't have to worry about multiplying long the long way ax plus b by another ax plus b. If we square ax plus b, remember ax squared would be a squared x squared, both the a and the x are both squared. b squared in the end is this b squared, and the middle term comes from multiplying the ax by the b, so that would be abx and doubling it, so there's the 2abx. If we're multiplying two binomials together, uh, one of which has a plus in the middle and the other minus, otherwise they're identical, then the linear terms add to zero. That product right there would be abx, and this product right here would be negative abx, and those add to zero. So all you have left actually is ax times ax, which is a squared x squared, so it's still a perfect square. And uh, b times negative b is minus b squared, so it's minus a perfect square. There's the b that's squared. And so the idea is if you see one of these, or this type of binomial, difference, this is called the difference of two squares, because we could think of it as ax squared minus b squared. So it's the difference of two perfect squares. Now the idea is if you see one of these, that you try this factoring and, and check to see if it works. So for example, in the first one, it's y squared plus 10y plus 25. So as soon as you see a trinomial starting with a perfect square and ending with a perfect square, then check and see if it's a perfect square trinomial. And so this will likely factor into y plus 5 squared. Now you check to make sure that works. y squared, of course, is the y squared, and 5 squared is 25. The check is really to see if this 10y term is correct here. And we get that by multiplying the 5 by the y, which would be 5y, and doubling it. And it is 10y, so that does factor into y plus 5 squared. For b, we have 9x squared minus 12x plus 4. And again, perfect square at the beginning, we could think of that as 3x all squared, and the 4 is 2 squared. And so this likely factors into 3x minus 2 squared. Again, 3x. If you square it, you get 9x squared, or if you take the square root of 9x squared, you get 3x, and the square root of 4 is 2. Now, there's a minus sign in the middle here because there's a minus sign here. And so if we square 3x, we of course get 9x squared. If we square the negative 2, we get 4. Does the 12x term, or the negative 12x term work? And yes, it does, because 3x times negative 2 would be minus 6x, and if you double that, you do get minus 12x. So that's the check to make sure that is right. So this does factor into 3x minus 2 squared. For C, we have 36m squared minus 84m plus 49. So again, perfect square at the end, that's 7 squared. And this would be 6m squared at the beginning. So this may factor into 6m minus 7 all squared. Again, 6m squared is 36m squared, or the square root of 36m squared is 6m. Square root of 49 is 7. Again, I put a minus sign here because the linear term has a minus. It's minus 84m. And we check to see if that term's right. 6m times negative 7 would be minus 42m. And if you double that, you do get minus 84m. So that does work. In D here, okay, a perfect square at the beginning, 9k squared, would be 3k all squared. And of course, uh, 2 squared is 4. 4 is a perfect square. But this doesn't actually work. If you look at it, you might think, well, it looks like it's probably 3k plus 2 squared, because 3k squared is 9k squared, and 2 squared is 4. And then you check to see if the middle term works, and it doesn't in this case, because 3k times 2 doubled, well, 3k times 2 is 6k, doubled is, is 12k, not 10k, so that doesn't work. Now, the way we would factor this is like we did in the last lesson. We'd look for two numbers to add to 10 and multiply to 36. And there's uh, a few pairs of numbers that add to 10 and multiply to 36. Remember, 9 times 4 is the 36. 1 and 36, or 2 and 18. Uh, we could also try 3 and 12. They also multiply to 36, or 4 and 9. And of course, 6 and 6. Those are the only pairs of numbers that could that multiply to 36 and could potentially add to 10. But none of them do add to 10. Uh, that's 37. 2 and 18 adds to 20. 3 and 12 adds to 15. 4 and 9 is a little bit close. That's 13. And 6 and 6 is 12. But none of them add to 10. And so that's then we would say that you cannot factor this trinomial. 
For e, y squared minus 25, again, uh, I'm looking at the second pattern here now. It's the difference, there's the subtraction sign, of two perfect squares. y is squared, of course, and 25 is 5 squared. So this should factor into y plus 5 and y minus 5. Again, it's y that I multiply by y to get that y squared. And 5 times negative 5 is, is minus 25. Each of these numbers in the end are the square root of 25 with a plus here and a minus here. And it doesn't matter if you want to rate the y minus 5 first and the y plus 5 second, it does not matter. For f, 49h squared, 49 is a perfect square, so we could think of this as 7h all squared, minus 36 is a perfect square, it's 6 squared. So this should factor into 7h plus 6 and 7h minus 6. Again, the square root of 49h squared would be 7h, so both binomials start with a 7h, and the square root of 36 is 6, so plus 6 here, minus 6 here. For g, still a difference, but they're not perfect squares. Uh, 32 and 18 do, however, have a common factor of 2, and so I haven't stressed the common factor throughout the examples yet, but I will here, because this is the first one that actually has a common factor. So you can factor a 2 out of both of those, that's it, that's the only common factor. So if you factor a 2 out of 32, you get 16, and a 2 out of 18, you get 9. So we have 2, and then 16w to the 4th minus 9z squared. Now this is actually, after we factor the 2 out, the difference of two perfect squares. This is actually 4w squared squared, and this is 3z squared. And so, don't forget the common factor of 2, but then since this is a difference of two perfect squares, it should factor into 4w squared minus 3z and 4w squared plus 3z. Again, the 4w squared at the beginning is the square root of the 16w to the fourth, or 4w squared times another 4w squared gives us 16w to the fourth. And the square root of 9 is 3, so 3 here, 3 here. Square root of z squared is z. So each of these have to be a z, so that z times z gives you z squared if you were to multiply it back. Now in h, this is a perfect square, and this is a perfect square, but it's a sum of two perfect squares and that will generally not factor. There are only very rare instances where the sum of two squares actually factors, and for all intents and purposes, you will not have to worry about that in this course. So as if you see the sum of two squares, this binomial cannot be factored. It, is, it does not follow this rule here. That only works for the difference of two perfect squares. And that's the end of the lesson.